Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes, your favorite heavy metal drinking buddy. I'm here today, very excited about this, talking to Jeremy Kling uh, from multiple bands, uh, Venom Inc., got in a uh, new band in Human Condition, uh, The Absence, uh, a bunch of bands. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so thank you very much, Jeremy. I'm really excited to chat with you. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. Great. How you doing? Doing all right, man. Having a Having a good hangout on my back porch down here in sunny Florida. I don't nice. know where everybody else is or wherever you're listening at home, but uh, I'm in the sun and I'm very thankful for that. Excellent. Very nice. Very cool. Well, let's, uh, God, there's so much I want to talk to you about. Um, why don't we start with kind of, you know, big, big news, at least for me, uh, in human condition, new band, new album coming out really Heck soon yeah. in the next, yep. well, in June, correct? Yep. June 4th. Great. So, um, and I mean, yeah, it's so amazing three piece. It's you, Terry Butler. Uh, so you're, you're doing vocals and drums, correct? Yeah. Uh, but I won't be doing drums live. I'll just okay. be doing any shows that we do. I'll just be singing, which is awesome because I get to retire the, uh, get to retire the sticks for this project, which is, that's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. But uh, yeah, on the recording, I end up doing the, uh, I did the drums because it was originally, uh, all this music for Inhuman Condition was originally uh, supposed to be the new Massacre record. All and right. uh, we had a pretty big falling out with the singer. And uh, without saying too much, because uh, I don't really subscribe too much to the old drama train, is, uh, you know, we just moved on and we were like, well, we have these tunes. Um, Terry actually just wanted to compare some notes, you know, when we left. And, uh, well, not, you know, we, we just compared notes. And then in doing so, uh, I'm like, dude check these tunes out you know here's what we wrote for this is what we were doing and he was all about it and you know i just described it yesterday as like imagine like a like a 400 yard pass that's a long shot and you're like i don't think i can make it and then we just went like this i was like would you want to play bass on it <laughs> and he goes fuck yes he goes i love what you guys have happening i'd love it and we were like wow it, what level of involvement do you want? Do you want to, do you want to start, do you want to be a, a band member? He's like, man, I want all in like hundred um, nice. percent. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, band practices, you know, coming up to record. Um, we've already shot, we shot two music videos last week. Um, he, oh. Terry's such a team player, man. He's like such a team player. So it's pretty cool. So th that band just kind of kind of just came about man all of a sudden some some witch was making some brew somewhere <laughs> and then boom here's here's this whole here's this whole band out of uh, ether really <laughs> and that's a that's a goddamn good brew right there i mean you, you know you and 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 terry and then your uh, your bandmate with uh so, you know a couple other bands um taylor okay. nordberg yep. uh, and you play with him in uh um the absence and uh or well. Uh, rips better yeah, yeah a couple of things yeah you guys have you, you have a long career together correct yeah yes sir um he just corrected me the other day it's, it's 11 years because i said it was 10 years and he's like dude you cut a year off and i'm like wow wow sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mean to Good Lord. remember i was telling you i was an airhead earlier you know before we started clicking but uh <laughs> anyways <laughs> no that's cool yeah i'm really excited about it. and and so I've actually heard an advanced copy of it and it's killer. It's amazing. It's so awesome. good. It's so oh, yeah, good. Man. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm kind of getting ready to do a review and, and you know, do a pairing with some beers. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Nice. I, I want to pick that up on vinyl when it comes out, which I think is later. I think August yeah. I think is the vinyl. August 4th or there. August 8th. Forgive me on that. If Taylor is here, he's the, he's the Rolodex. He's, the, he's the, the, the numbers man, you know. I, I have other strong points like if you give me a shovel i can dig you a real good hole <laughs> and uh <laughs> i can get it straight and you know even you know a little bit more of the grunt but sorry we all have strengths and weaknesses right, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah it's it's yeah what i heard is amazing it sounds fantastic oh, really yeah, tight man. really cool um yeah it's gonna be i think it's gonna do that, that album's gonna do really well i think you know i mean when i when Hope i heard so, about man. who it was i i I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is amazing. This is going to be such a cool band. Man, it was, it, it, we were really sad uh, when it, everything went not with, uh, you know, with the other outfit. And it was like, that was what we were like most upset about Taylor and I, because we put our time and energy into writing 
you know, we wrote these tunes and really had like what we felt was some stuff, you know, in our opinion, naturally. And that's, that's all that, that's all that I can live by is just my opinion. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, we were like, all right, well, I uh, hope it doesn't get shelved. And dude, it didn't even have time to be shelved. It was like fucking in one pan and then boom, into the next one. And it's just been kind of like lightning since, you know, which is pretty yeah. awesome. We're really fortunate. All that artwork came together so famously. And I just have to say that Dan Goldsworthy is the man. He yeah. is the man. He is the motherfucking man. It, actually, in the record, we thank him as a... Uh, Babe Ruth, because that dude knocked home run. He knocked that home run out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> that was the 400 yard thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, was... That's a killer album cover. Yeah. The, yeah. And the album is uh, just over, you know, uh, um, Rat God, correct is the Rat name God. of it. But yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Really, really cool album cover. It, you know, has a, has a kind of Ed Repka vibe to it, but it's, yep. it's its own thing. So it's Death, it's Death Thrash, uh, Harkins. Uh, Harkens back to stuff that we're familiar with, like a like the color scheme from Chaos AD, which is, uh, I mean, loosely Chaos AD, but, uh, you know, just some some classic feels, but just a great piece of art anyways, you know, just in general. Yeah. I, every time I look at it, it's like, well, there's more to see here. I'm like, oh, my God, like, look at that. That's, <laughs> and that's what the old Morbid Angel covers used to do or obituary or, and, and, you know, any of the ones that we loved, it was like, oh, if you zoomed in, if you zoomed in, that could be the art, album artwork. Yeah. You know? which is so sweet you know yeah which definitely. is like on the back of the cd because we did everything we did the layout we did the mix we did the master we did soup to nuts 100 percent is uh all us and uh like the back of the record has like a zoomed in piece of the stairs and man that alone could be like the album cover yeah. <laughs> this is a little a little clip by the by the main dude's feet so yeah they have those demons coming out of the stairs that's it's, oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing cool. yeah i can't wait for people to see this it's so cool it's so Thank cool you, man. yeah really exciting um yeah speaking of which uh not just that but um i mean you're you're you you're like one of the hardest working musicians in the industry right now i would say and and most peril pl yeah prolific uh, as well you've got um you've got this coming out you've got the absence has a new album coming out yeah in, june uh 24th or 25th okay so just a few weeks later uh, uh, ink has a new album coming out yeah so you've got a lot going on right now yeah um, also uh i purgatory which is a band with um uh, raga johansson so we're in rib spreader and this is so Rib Spreader is more like a classic Swedish death metal band, sort of like Grave kind of worship or Old Edge of Sanity. And uh, this uh, uh, Eye of Purgatory is like later Edge of Sanity with like lots of keyboards and all different types of stuff. And uh, I actually um, play bass in that band and Taylor plays wow. drums and guitar and keyboards <laughs> and he mixed it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that record will be out, uh, uh, Eye of Purgatory. We have the uh, new Gore Gang EP, which is coming out. We're actually releasing a video for, um, we did a cover of White Zombies Electric Head Part 2. So oh, wow. by the time, uh, pardon me, Part 1, Electric Head Part 1. And uh, that'll be out um, tomorrow. So by the time this airs, it'll already be out. So check it out. Yeah, check cool. The video out. Wow. Uh, yeah. And yeah, lots, lots going on, man. Lots, you know, on top of, Top of the punk band that we have four with uh, Speezy from Creator. And it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah you but, it's fun, up. though. <laughs> well, and you're, I mean, it, it, if people aren't familiar, I mean, you're, I mean, multi instrumental, multi talented. I mean, you know, bass, drums, vocals, guitar. You produce, you do recording engineering, you know, record engineering, sound engineering. Yep. Uh, you've been a drum tech. You've been, uh, a tour manager, mm -hmm. um, yep. Sepultura, live, live I mean, sound engineer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do kind of everything. So I don't know how you even know what time of day it is at this point. Man, you know, <laughs> I do. I do my best, and I don't want to sound like some aloof, uh, you know, idiot. Like, but I, I do my best. I really fail when it comes to dates and exact stuff, and I really do struggle a bit with that. But. Um, my intentions are good and I try, so, <laughs> but I'm, I am pretty busy. You know, on top of that, I, I have five kids between my wife and I oh, and wow. uh, two natural grandchildren. So it's, it's pretty much 
you know, it's a regular dad stuff. So I've actually welcomed the, um, I've welcomed this time off for the pandemic. Uh, I haven't cursed it. I mean, I wish we were playing, like, do not get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But I have relished the fact that uh, this is the first year in any of my kids' history that I was there for everybody's birthday. That has never happened oh, for nice. any of their lives. I've always consistently missed somebody somewhere. And it was always like the roaming joke of like, oh, you're not going to be, what? Where oh you're in Czech Republic or you're in you know Iowa or you know you're somewhere not home but uh, I got everybody's this year so it was pretty amazing wife grandkids even Taylor's you know we were we were all together so it was cool so can't complain that's really cool yeah got it's a dad I mean, and just just got to create so that's pretty yeah, sweet that, that's really cool yeah I, I mean you've been probably up until 2020 you were touring almost nonstop for like 20 years right at least uh yeah about uh, 15, 16, pretty solid, you know, like yeah. a, there was like a three year period in between there. That's why I guess it's not like a full 20, but right. like three years where I didn't, but that was like 27, 28, 29. It's kind of, I kind of started crewing around then, which was amazing. What a, what an entryway. And I just, the reason why I did so much and took on so much is because I was hungry for it and I wanted to be a part of it and I wanted to help and I wanted to be there. Right. And I just took jobs that were, I just took them, you know, maybe if I wasn't ready for them or not, I'm like, well, trial by fucking fire. Let's go. Let's go. That's the only way to learn, at least for me. And uh, I just did it. I just, you know, started here and then kind of, I was started on monitors and then it was like, they needed a front of house guy for a gig. I was like, got you. Let's go. Nice. And they were like, well, we don't know. And I was like, let's give it a shot and let's see what we, what, so let's see what we think. We watched the playback and they were like, wow uh that sounds really fucking heavy i'm like hey i'm i'm glad you like it awesome <laughs> let's uh <laughs> let's uh anytime you need me from there and then it just kind of grew and then you know i started doing sound for exodus and um yeah yeah and it was just the list is list is there and it's kind of fucking awesome that i was able to uh flourish that way and just grow and just be a be an artist myself you know and it doesn't matter where i'm at i'm i'm painting something you know i'm oh cool whether I'm, whether I'm painting here, whether I'm painting here, whether I'm painting here, just right. get to be creative. And that's, if you're not having fun, what are you doing? Right. What, what are we doing if we're not having fun? If we're not having fun, then fuck it. Let's yeah. quit. <laughs> let's, let's give it a, let's give it a break, you know? Yeah, that's a good philosophy. I like that. I like that. How yeah, that actually, do, uh, doing front of house led me to get the Venom gig. Um, I was I a front of house engineer. Um, I did a tour of Goat Whore and uh, Toxic Holocaust, yes, mm, I think so, forgive me if I'm wrong, um, we did a tour and uh, I got on great with the guys and they had, you know, they were kind of a, a bit at odds with Abaddon anyways and uh, they invited me to go on a European tour with Suffocation and I was like, oh my god, nice. <laughs> I'm like, what, what? Yeah, it kind oh, of blew amazing. me away, man. I'm like, no way. You know, we just got along so well, and we jammed at uh, many sound checks and just played. And like I said, everything was like real chill, and everything was good and copacetic. And then uh, I got I got the call, you know, which is right place, right time. You know, do the job, prepared, luck, everything all kind of merged, and there it was. So they kind of so so uh, Mantis and and Tony contacted you about try, you didn't try out it was just hey you, we want you in the band well uh, i mean they had kind of a uh, on that last tour they were kind of um hinting towards they needed something like that anyway so we had jammed a bit serious on that tour that we were on you know we had we'd done a few just just a few good jams and it was like it went really well and uh, actually uh john zazula um he gave he was managing them at the time he gave me a call and was like uh yeah, hey Jeremy, it's it's John Johnny Z, and I'm like, oh good lord, he, he's such a sweetheart. Anyway, he's such a good yeah. dude. He's like, man, he's like the guys really want you to go. You know, they were talking with Tom Hunting, and I'm like, oh my god, stop <laughs> it. And we're like, yeah, we're talking with Tom, but the guys really just want to they want to bring you out. You know, they've toured with you and they know you and they they think that you're part of the the team already and they think that you know the sound that you know what it should be, and they uh you know they want you to go with them what do you think and I was like oh my god I immediately like text both of them was like no way <laughs> yes <laughs> let's do it man 
Well, and in, in in true Venom spirit, you you took a stage name. Was that mm -hmm. given to yeah. you, or did you choose that name? Uh, well, That's War kinda, Machine. Uh, yeah, but kind of what happened was um, they were saying uh, the 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 Venom fans are so devout and they are so very much involved. And one of our fans uh, had created a um, a picture of us from Bloodstock. And they said, uh, it had said Mantis, Demolition Man, and it said uh, Jeremy Kling. And they said, they called it the War Machine. They uh, were implying that we were the War Machine at that show. And I'm like, man, the War Machine is amazing or whatever. And I believe it was Winston. And he was like, oh, the War Machine, War Machine should be your name. That would be great. And I'm like, love that Kiss song. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it, man. I was like, how killer would that be? So my kids will, uh, my youngest daughters are nine and 10 and they'll be like, what, what's your name in Venom again? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's War Machine. They're like, people call you War Machine? I'm like, e uh, depending on where I'm at. Yeah, that happens. Uh, they're like, wow, what's that like? I'm like, oh, it's a pretty amazing, it's a pretty amazing name. I'm like, yeah. pretty like tough, you know? So that's pretty cool. That's, that's, a, that's the origin of that right there. Yeah, and I would say if, you mentioned the Bloodstock show that was like 2018, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, if uh, for anybody watching this, if you have not seen Jeremy drumming, if if you want to really see, you know, people want to see your prowess, your musical prowess, I think that live show is fucking amazing. You're you Thank just you. beat the shit out of those <laughs> drums. It's it's phenomenal. I I, I, I was telling I interviewed. Um, mantis a while back and i told him uh you know after work i usually will ride our exercise bike and watch videos and i watched i was watching that show and i about killed myself because i just started <laughs> pedaling and just i was just you know raging with this, yeah, yeah, with this yeah. show and then realized like i'm overdoing it i'm going to give myself a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> heart rates at 150 you're like yeah, yeah. Third peak. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. But it was really that, that yeah, just the drumming. And it's, oh, it, that's an amazing show. Yeah. If any, yeah, it's on YouTube. It's killer to watch. Heck yeah. That was one of those no sleeps, uh, you know, total, uh, total bang over flying from the night before, you know, just last minute. I mean, we got there literally like 30 minutes before we took stage. We had to, uh, we had to go up the M5, I think is what it is. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Britain. Uh, we had to go up the, uh, anyway, let's say the M, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had to go up that, and it took like an extra hour from the airport. And it, it was just one of those things where it was kind of like, okay, and we're on him. Boom. <laughs> and we got off stage, and they were like, wow. All the, all the crew was like, wow. They're like, you still have nine minutes. And uh, Demolition Man goes, nope, we're done. <laughs> it was like that's it fuck them yeah. fuck them but like that's we're it we're that's exhausted like it. we're we're fucking we just did it we did the whole river and it was like cool man it was pretty it was very true venom fashion which uh you know it's good man it's yeah that was that's an amazing show yeah it's a cool thank you very show. much Hell well yeah. no, i mean any any i mean really just you know I, I would tell anybody yeah just type in your name on youtube watch any of your drumming and yeah i mean that's I mean, there's a drum clinic right there. Like, this is heavy metal drumming here. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. Definition of it. it. Speaking of which, um, why don't we, let's go back in time a little bit. Well, maybe a lot. Uh, how did you get into music? What like, what was the, the catalyst for you? Um, well, uh, man, my father uh, passed away four years ago now, I think. Oh, sorry. Um, he, uh, thank you. Um, he was a incredibly talented guitar player. Um, really reminiscent of, uh, of, uh, well, I guess I'll get to that. So he was a really, uh, really fantastic guitar player, like rock guitar. So we're talking like Grand Funk, uh, Deep oh. Purple, um, you know, the likes, uh, Richie Blackmore, um, maybe a little less noty than Richie Blackmore, I should right. say, but just a riff powerhouse for sure, you know, for sure, like, leaning a bit more towards a uh, deep purple but i mean also had incredible feel like uh like uh david gilmore from pink floyd so um at two he started me uh well actually i my wife just found i have this baby book of mine and my dad said something i was like 18 months old and 
it was like he played along to with the drum set along to black sabbath's paranoid so, oh <laughs> uh, that's in my baby book he wrote that uh, nice. um and then uh you know i really started uh playing more and more at like four and five and and i started playing more with him and then uh we would jam all the time so clear up until like um 14 15 when i started jamming with outside sources and outside buddies and uh really started um you know ripping from there um but it was for sure my dad and uh my brother also plays uh drums he's six years older than me and when we were growing up we would like we would jam with dad and uh like i would play for like 15 20 minutes and get tired and then my brother would play for 15 20 minutes and have to take a break and meanwhile my dad would just rip for like four hours straight he wouldn't quit he would wow. just keep playing and then we would just wrote he had like a rotating drummer section you know <laughs> which worked out for him you know we would uh, we'd come in and play and trade licks you know my brother and i would trade licks and of course uh i, I got a lot of my early teeth cutting there um yeah and it really just grew it just grew I and mean, it got to a point it was like man i just i am all all i do is music all i've ever done was music and i mean i'm i do lots of I, i'm incredibly skilled and handy i can you know like i built my fence at my house and i'm uh i've, I've had jobs you know namely pizza jobs don't judge me <laughs> how do you get the drummer off your front porch pay him for the pizza i'm <laughs> i'm the living i'm the living that joke <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um you know yeah just just that was basically the the intro to it was my my dad he was really uh the rock maybe he was the band dad that came out to the shows for the early bands and bought one of uh, like three of each of the shirts and like five CDs. And he would hand those out to family members and uh, you know, people he would meet. He'd be like, my son's in a band. You know, he was wearing a absent shirt. We have a let's fucking thrash shirt on the back. And he would wear that thing to Walmart all the time and be like, I pissed off a few old ladies, Jared. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <man."> <laughs> that's great. I'm like killer. <laughs> really cool. That's really yeah. cool. So it's all pop, you know. It's really his fault that I like uh, Uriah Heep and Lucifer's Friend and Rainbow and all that stuff. I oh, love that stuff. Th that leads me to the first time I jammed with uh, Mantis. Uh, first time we started playing, uh, my father had already passed away, and uh, we were jamming. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, I know these breaks. You know, you can you can air drum to Venom all you want. You can play along to Venom all you want. But when you're in a room and you're jamming with Mantis, you have like a different you're feeling the riffs at that point it becomes like a because those old records you know welcome to hell and black metal and they're at war with satan those things are uh sort of a mess it's sort of like <laughs> it's sort of like someone doing this the whole time like they were recording on top of an earthquake which right. is totally cool it's totally cool in like a fuck you kind of way <laughs> uh, but uh when i first time i jammed with mantis i was like oh my god i know these breaks i'm like oh wow this is like this is judas priest or this is deep purple or or this is or this is or you know it, fill in it here and fill, fill in any of the you know what it could have been and i'm like i know these breaks it felt like jamming with my dad and i'm like i'm like jeff don't take this the wrong way i was like but uh it really had that vibe and he was like you know mate oh i'm honored mate i'm honored that you've play with that we get to jam together and i'm like oh my god you know it's you know it's again it's so over the top i'm i'm a fan myself and then we'll just be jamming along to black metal or countess bathory or you know lady lust and <laughs> i'm like there, oh, there it is man i was like here i get to fucking sit here i was like i'm so lucky i'm again i'm so lucky and thankful and honored to be where i'm at nice that's really cool um yeah i would imagine there's uh, well, I mean, you you had been touring and and doing a lot of, you know, tech stuff and and whatnot for a lot of these bands for a long time. But I, there's got to be that almost you know, a like decade. Said, pardon? Almost a decade. Oh well, yeah. Um, but I would say, I mean, you, I, I would imagine at some point you're, there's kind of got to be this kind of sense of awe when you're yeah sitting in a room with Mantis, you know, like drumming, like holy shit, I'm. Oh yeah mantis <laughs> it's fucking but you know super nice guy of course but yeah i mean still he's this rock god man i'm in a uh, uh I'm, I'm in a jam the other day with terry butler and he starts going off how uh jeff or mantis is the reason why he even picked up a guitar in the first place right he's like he's like he is the, it's the exact reason why man uh 
holy shit you know so you take terry butler who is you know for most of us you're yeah, like legend, yeah. oh my god terry butler yeah. <laughs> terry butler's like oh my god mantis and i'm like oh my god mantis oh my god terry <laughs> butler you know yeah. so it's it's all we're all just everybody's pretty stoked except for you know mantis is pretty damn cool man he's yeah he's a smooth operator smooth yeah, very, operator very down to i mean guy. He, he's a big kk downing fan so if oh, we were in a yeah. room with kk downing he would do the same damn thing so yeah that's true that's true, that's true. yeah that's we're all just fans story. we're all just standing on the backs of our grandfathers and just ripping and just yeah. doing the best we can to if you're not having fun you're not having fun uh my friend my dear friend jonas shelgren from uh sweden had told me that he said that one night he was like Jeremy, we're not having fun. Let's go to bed. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, again, I'm like a guy with a shovel, and I'm like, no, we got to get this trench done. Right. He's like, if we're not having fun, we're not having fun. He's like, if we're not having fun, what are we doing? And I'm like, okay, that's a good life philosophy. Incredibly straightforward Swedish logic. To where I was like, aha, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to model some stuff after this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, well, so you said, you know, you started drumming with your dad. Did, did also the, the guitar work, was that, did you start playing guitar at a young age as well as bass? Or was that newer? Is that a newer? Uh, well, I mean, I started playing like not at quite as young. I was like 12, 12 or 13. So yeah, while it's, yeah, it's still pretty young. So young age, I started ripping really early and my dad really kept trying to push guitars on me, which was really funny. He was like, one of the things he said, I'll never forget. He was like, well, Jerry, you can't walk down the street and play drums. <laughs> He's like, but you can walk down the street and play your guitar. You just show up and you have your instrument already. I'm like, well, that's a very good point. So I never made it past a point where I never got to a point where I was like, I felt really super good about it at a young age. So I uh, had about like 16. I really kind of fell out from playing guitar and I really just focused on drums and I didn't start playing guitar again until about 25 or 26 and then it started oh. it came back to me and I I pick up a guitar and I'm like oh shit I can still play all of a uh, master of puppets so cool you know yeah. <laughs> I was like I was like I'm a little rusty but uh you know I get the but you know nowadays it's um I just play I play guitar or bass pretty much like a drummer so anything that I write here is just rhythmic and you know, I cool. accent like a damn drummer and do everything like a drummer. I mow the fucking yard like a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means, but I yeah. do that. <laughs> I don't know what that means either, but I love it. I think that's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> um, so in terms of your drumming, um, who were your big influences? Um, Lars, for sure. Um, at such an early age, I mean, who wasn't influenced by Metallica? Um, and also because it's a bruise. Um, oh, yeah. But, Thank you. I have a non-alcoholic. Uh, oh, there you go. What is it? Boulevard. And, oh yeah, Boulevard uh, also, Great Brewery. And also athletic. So it's a a cool IPA for those of you who don't drink. I'm actually six and a half years uh, haven't drank. So oh, congratulations. Cheers. That's thank cool. you. And uh, yeah, cheers to you. Okay. So the question again was um, uh, uh, your influences as far I as I track myself. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Lars for sure. Um, that dude, uh, revolutionized stuff for all of us. You know, he, he played what Abaddon was doing and he took it and he played simple stuff that anybody could figure out and anybody could air drum to, but you actually can't because he plays when you think he's going to hit somewhere, he goes on an and, and then like, he all like, right. well, he'll, eh, eh, and then he'll go and then it, it's pretty it's pretty amazing for its simplicity. It's also incredibly complex. Um, I always dug that. Always dug that. Um, as far as other drummers growing up, I was a, a big fan of uh, Ian Pace. Uh, oh, Purple, yeah. like I said, and my dad. My dad, man, he would like, <clears throat> he would like, as a kid, he would like crush me with knowledge. He would like take my head and crush it with knowledge. <laughs> he was like, this is Donnie Brewer and this is, uh, you know, this is Ian Pace and Ian Pace played with X, Y, and Z. And, and he would just like dump all this information at me because he would, he himself was a player. He himself was incredibly interested. Like uh, he got to see, um, he saw Frank Zappa when he brought Steve Vai out for the first time. And oh, wow. uh, 
He saw um, Ted Nugent at the Pontiac Silverdome. Uh, he saw X Y like all these, all this stuff, you know. So as a young age, I I really like was like listen to this drummer. He's like Jeremy. Do you hear what this drummer is doing? You know, this is a uh, this is Bill Ward, and this is a uh, you know. So whenever I got out onto my own um, and started spreading my wings, uh, that. I latched right on death metal as an early, uh, early teen. So 13, 14, I just latched on to the tit and just haven't got off, man. I've been, I have not got off of the tit. Uh, Pete Sandoval, uh, Steve from Deicide, um, Paul from Cannibal, uh, any of those, any of like the, any of the guys who, uh, George, uh, Derek Roddy. Um, I mean, the list is, you know, Alex Marquez, you know, the list is huge, oh, yeah. man. All, all those guys all all really shaped me as a young as a young man into uh, you know, into what I am today. So I don't have one particular hero, but I got a lot of them. And I'm really fortunate to uh know any of them, let alone get to work with some of them. Uh Taylor actually plays in a 70s rock band with um with Paul from Cannibal. So oh. uh it's really cool. It's called Quantum, and uh they're so it's a power trio. And um, some pretty interesting music, man. Pretty interesting music. And we asked Paul, it was like, hey, man, would you be interested in writing some lyrics for this inhuman condition? Um, because, I mean, he writes lyrics for Cannibal. Uh, so we're like, maybe it'd be a fun way for you to create. And you can just like, you know, flex your, flex your lyric wings over here and just like, you know, collaborate with us. And he was like, hell yeah. Nice. Ah, it sounds awesome. So he actually, on the record, he wrote all the lyrics and patterns for Killing Pace. Oh, so wow. if it has a slight Cannibal Corpse vibe, uh, that would be completely Paul's fault. <laughs> That's great. That's really yeah. cool. So to be able to do that is like, again, it's just, uh, I'm really fortunate. You know, And while he's here, he was talking about, um, I won't embarrass him, but he was talking about an, a, a band that he's fond of. And he was like, I got to talk to the uh, the drummer for that band. And he was like all, he was all chuffed about like talking with this drummer. And, you know, Taylor and I are like, dude, you're okay. Well, it's, <laughs> it's all just a damn cycle, man. And we all, all just, right. and we all just cycle together and, you know, just have, have fun and create. So we're just lucky, you know. Nice, nice. So, and you're in, uh, and you're in, you know, death metal heaven because you live in, where it's all happening and where it's always happened, you know, but yeah, there you go. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. My, my wife and I just bought a, we bought a five acre piece of land and she bought me this hat. She's like, well, if we're going to own land, you need to have a Florida as fuck hat. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> That's great. But so you probably saw, especially if you got it, you know, at such a young age, you probably saw a lot of the, the the classic death metal bands, you know, especially growing up in that area. Oh yeah. You know. Yep, absolutely. I mean, including seeing those guys around it, like my sister likes to uh my sister likes to give me a little bit of a, a memory, uh, a memory charge. And she's like, you remember when we were when you were 16? Because she's 12 years older than me. She's like, I had taken you to Walmart. Or, or I think it was the mall. She was like, I had taken you to the store. Let's just say. It's like, I had taken you to the store and we saw uh, the drummer for Deicide. You remember seeing him? And she was like, she was like, you, I told you to go up and talk to him. And you're like, oh, absolutely not. Like, no way. I'm going <laughs> to go talk to him. I can't go talk to Steve. You know, no way. You know, that was like 16. And to me, like, you know, Deicide was like, they may as well have been the fucking Rolling Stones. You know? right. oh, yeah, <laughs> there was, yeah, yeah. there was no line of separation there for me. I was like, oh my God. I can't go talk to him. No way. What would I say? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You know, I was like, thanks for that fun memory. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember. It was cool. That's great. But yeah. It, it's everywhere. You know, we used to go to Aces Records. Um, uh, James Murphy worked there. And that's why when everything went south with Massacre, you know, talking with Terry wasn't something weird because you know, we're already friends. Terry was going to play bass on the uh, Writers of the Plague album for The Absence. That's a little known fact. Um, oh, really? Yeah, he had, uh, we didn't have a bass player. Our bass player, Nick Kalachi, had um, recently, I think he joined the military, oh. joined the Navy. And uh, we were out of bass player and uh, we had... We had talked to Terry. We had known him anyways. We had playing, played with Six Feet Under and chatted with him. And 
I was like, hey, man, would you be interested in doing the bass? And he totally was into it, learned the entire record, and uh, came up the day before, brought his gear, was all set up. We were set up to record. Next morning, uh, had a pretty major uh, family accident. Uh, well, not an accident, but he had a family emergency come up and uh, couldn't make it to the recording. He was like, man, I, I don't ever do this, and I'm really, really sorry. And we're like, well, I mean, you know, stuff happens, man. You can't yeah. count on the weather, can you? Um, so the bass tone on Riders is actually all Terry's gear, his bass, his his rig, his everything. It's oh. all that. And Pete and Pat actually played the bass on that album, but um, right. it was all Terry. So so we're you just kind of kick around these circles. And uh, James Murphy actually mastered our first EP for The Absence. And um, we've worked together a whole bunch. And yeah, we're kind of in the thick of it, man. And it's really sad that Chuck, uh, you know, uh, I see your death shirt. It's really really sad that chuck passed because uh, i mean we might have well the world you know, selfishly i would have been happy to have met him and potentially oh, yeah. worked with him or even just told him what what a great guy i thought uh, his or what great music i thought he created but uh you know or and then also would have been nice to as a fan to hear more music from him more oh, controlled oh. night and yeah. to see where death would have progressed to i mean who knows it, it who fucking knows because you know he would have motherfucker would have went retro and put out some record that was like you know cause of death or you know leprosy or yeah. any of that like scream like the early you know, from beyond like any of that early it would have had that vibe he would have went back to that and would have hearkened and everyone would have been like finally yeah. a lot of people would have been pissed too it have been like oh no you know you can't you can't please a tampa death metal guy so, no no, no, no. no. everyone so has weird. arms crossed here man it shows yeah yeah, it's crazy movie. the the arguments you see online with with about death. You know whether it's early, you know the more raw, that early death metal death sound, or the the more progressive jazz influence stuff. Well, I would argue it always had that jazz influence, but that's yep. just my personal opinion. But yeah, I, I love it. Really, I love every album. Had a really straight drummer, man. Bill yeah. Andrews was straight as a fucking gate man yeah. and that's what i tried to do on this inhuman condition because it was all for massacre so man to like really to go like this to bill really to be like bill i want to honor what you did i mean if you listen to what i do in the absence i'm like simple this simple that simple 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 this this that beep, beep, boop, 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 super busy like an octopus back there then with inhuman condition when everybody gets to hear this record if you do um it's straightforward and like just yeah. there's whole sections where I don't hit a goddamn symbol other than that ride, man. It's just the ride. Cause it's like, what would Bill do? You know, what would he have done? Like, what would he have done if he had a, if he were playing on this stuff? And I tried my best to channel that and the same, I did the same thing with the new venom because I don't want to stray too much from the, you know, the, there's a vibe, man. There's a, there's a vibe. And luckily for me, venom Inc. Uh, with, with Ave, uh, they set a precedent, so everything was already really tight. So I was able to be myself because I'm a I'm a pretty tight drummer, and I was able to be myself while also channeling some Abaddon to bring in some bring in some yeah. of that some of that wash and that that push, which uh, it's pretty cool. It's just well, honoring I, honoring the music, you know, really. Yeah, I and mean, that's that's what I really love about your your drumming is you. Yeah, you you you'll capture the vibe, but then it's still very fresh and it's very you, which is cool. Like, yeah, when you listen, like in Human Condition, it's I mean, not just the drumming, but I mean the music itself. It sounds like Massacre, if Massacre was now, if it was a new thing. I mean, there's that vibe to it, but it, you're not. It's not a. It's not a nostalgic thing. It's not a copycat thing. It's like we're gonna we're nodding to this band but here's what we're doing. And it's, in my Perfect. opinion. For, thank you. And it, it would have been amazing if it ended up being a massacre record, but you know, you just, again, you can't count on the weather and yeah, be, onward and upward, no worries, you know. What, it, uh, and I don't know if you can say much, but what, what can you tell us about the, the new Venom Inc. album? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, those fellas are, um, those fellas are hard at work. I know that. Um, I had played drums on enough to do a double record. So I did wow. I did a lot of music. I, I tracked all my stuff. Um, I know that they have been struggling to get uh, Tony over to Portugal. So uh, they got to go from 
uh, Tony lives in London and uh, Mantis lives in Portugal. So right. they've been border locked due to all this, uh, all the coronavirus and the restrictions. So it's kind of been a bit of a hold, but um, uh, I just talked to uh, the guys in the band chat that we have, of course, because everybody has damn have, like, <laughs> many band chats, but uh, right. uh, the Venom one is uh, everybody's, there it's underway so news soon so very cool and i'm so stoked to get that music out because that's some of, yeah. some of jeff's best writing man some of his best stuff you know my opinion of course and that doesn't really matter but uh i think it's some some really killer really inventive stuff really fresh stuff that i mean he's a damn riff machine man he's, oh, a, he's riff amazing riff machine and leads forget it man he's just one of the best players out there in the game yeah, I agree. I agree. I always thought that, um, well, you know, what spawned Venom Inc., the, 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 the Demolition Man era was super underrated. You Hell know, yeah. Primeval, Primeval kicks ass, oh, dude. Fuck yeah. That album is amazing. Man, Abaddon was on like nine kinds of fire on that record, and it shows. You can hear it. It's like, there you go. Show me the real Kirk Hammett. You know, it's like, yeah. there you go. You yeah. remember that scene from uh, the making of the Black Album? Uh, yeah. Bob Rock was, you know, fucking yeah. um, But he really, uh, it's it's great, man. That album is, the songs are fucking killer. And they also tuned up to E. Mm, wait, don't, don't quote me. They tuned up. I know that. I don't know how high up they went, but I think it's E standard. Um, Great album, man. Actually, I just got that on vinyl. They just re-released it. So I did too. <laughs> yeah, nice. Actually, Taylor bought it for me for my birthday or something like that. Or or maybe just like a just because he's I came home and it was there and he was like, here you go. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's a great album. And I think, you know, maybe one thing that also it's a little different about that album in some way, you know, with Al Barnes on on rhythm guitar, mm, you know, yeah. which was I think the first time really Venom had ever had two guitar players. Um, you know, that added a whole new dimension to it. And it's just, yeah, it's just so cool. So cool. Dude, we played Temples of Ice in uh, in London with Al. He came out oh, and did that nice. tune with this. Yeah, I was like, no way. It was my third show with the damn band. We start in, we start in the UK and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. we're starting in the That's home pressure. band? Dude, it, it was really funny. I, I flew in and uh, Taylor and I, because Taylor was actually my drum tech. And well, he was the drum tech and he was uh, back backline tech for uh for venom on that suffocation tour and uh so we get into bristol and we had rehearsals but we got in early so we got in early the night before we watched a movie and he was like let's watch whiplash i'm like what's whiplash he's like I, it's about a drummer <laughs> and he gets uh i don't know i it's kind of hard to explain is it kind of just have to watch it i was like okay cool so we watched it and i'm like oh i'm like oh my god <laughs> i'm like uh I'm like, Demolition Man sort of resembles this guy. And uh, oh my God, I don't know if you've seen the movie. If, I, have, you seen I don't it? think I have. Wow. It's about, uh, well, it's about a drummer and he's in a, um, like a very fancy New York jazz school. And his, uh, he gets into like the class of like the, the guy who like creates the, you know, yeah, creates the band. And he ends up being a fucking tyrant and the whole movie is stressful like start to finish is stressful and that he he's like the worst anyways check it out i don't want to say too much because it's for sure worth a watch but um the next day we had sound uh we had a uh, we had a, a rehearsal space set up so we were working out the set and uh i broke seven sticks and i broke my snare top Jesus. head at this, uh, we were at this little tiny shithole uh, rehearsal place in Bristol, and uh, I never played drums like that. You know, I, I'm pretty. If you see me in the absence, I'm technically proficient. I'm really yeah. controlled, and everything is like held down. With Venom, I don't even. I have no idea. Like all of a sudden, this like animal came out, which was awesome because I was like, "Oh my god, where did that come from?" And then the next day was in Bristol, and then the next day it, it was just all in the UK at first. Now. There was like so much pressure, but you know, anyway, sorry, I, uh, I got off subject, but Al came out in London and we got to rip together and it was a lifelong friend after that. And he oh, yeah. is he's such great. a sweetheart, man. He's like such a good dude. Such a yeah, good dude. Saw him that. He came out to the Bloodstock gig and we got to hang oh. out again and it was pretty cool, man. So anytime we're in the UK, he makes his way out, which is 
pretty fucking sweet. But yeah, Primeval kicks ass, though, man. It's yeah. a good album. So is Temples of Ice. Yeah, um, yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, I love all that. It's amazing. It's killer. Yeah, that's that's some good. That's some really good stuff. Um, well, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you all night. I know you got you got things going on. Uh, so um, I'll ask you one last question. This is the, the qu question I always ask everybody. I know uh, you mentioned earlier in, in the interview you don't you don't drink alcohol anymore. Yep. Um, but uh, so my my page is Bruising Tunes. I pair beer, craft beer with with metal albums. Um, so Jeremy, War Machine, you're kicking back on a Saturday night. Uh, what uh, non-alcoholic beer do you crack open, and what album do you do you spin? Well. Um there's a Hefeweizen, um, and I can't remember the name, but I get it ever so often. But it's, uh, oh man, I, I guess I'd have to look it up. I wasn't prepared for this. Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, anyways, a non-alcoholic Hefeweizen is a uh, killer. It's good for me. A nice, uh, nice thick, pungent beer. Um, I, do, I do like beer. I do, I do enjoy the taste of it. I like, uh, I like reds. I like stouts. Um, uh, Bravis Brewing makes a really great stout um which is a uh, killer and i guess what would i put on man it ranges i got a i got a pretty vast record collection and uh i play anything from a, a kiss creature of the night not because it has war machine on it um uh i'll play uriah heap uh live uh scorpions oh, yeah. live in 79 um it really just it really depends i mean i could throw on gojira or uh you know my sugar or whatever Whatever the mood is, or my wife will maybe put on Portis Head, or uh, you know, it just kind of kind of goes all over the map. This morning was Pink Floyd. Wish you were nice. here. So oh, fucking great album, one of my yeah. favorite all time albums. Great way to start the day, man. Great way to start yeah, the day. Yeah. And Uriah Heep too. Fuck, I love love Uriah Heep. One of my yeah. all time favorite bands. That, yeah, I mean, I, and I was so I got so into them because of Lucifer's Friend, and I I thought that that yeah. stuff was. That blew my mind when I was a kid. I couldn't handle that. You know, the yeah. album cover was so scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, why is this dude in a trench coat? And why right. is this other dude also in a trench coat? And why yeah. is that dude bald and short? And yeah. what's happening here? <laughs> yeah, in fact, I I guess it was just this past year, and I think it was what cancer uh, that got him. I because I actually had an interview lined up with uh, Ken Hensley, oh, and okay. then I didn't hear back from him. Oh, and he didn't man. respond. And then I saw that he had passed, oh, I think, man. from cancer. And yeah, I that was a shitty day. <laughs> that was a hey, really you know, shitty day. They're they're freaking dropping too, man. And every day they're dropping. That's why it's like, are we having fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Jeremy, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, buddy. You know, best of luck to you. You've got a lot of stuff coming out. Everybody needs to check this shit out. I will, uh, I'll post some, uh, look, look below this interview. There'll be some links to pages, you know, definitely in human condition, the absence, new right. albums coming out really soon. So get on that. There's some killer shit there. So uh, yeah, thank you, man. It's Thanks great talking. you, buddy. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Yep, you too, bud. Nice uh, nice meeting with you, and we'll eventually meet in person, and we can uh, share a, a fake beer and a real beer. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great.